please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I now call this meeting of the Brevard County Board of Zoning Adjustment to order. Um, Mr. Ball, would you please uh, describe the function and operation of the Board of Zoning Adjustment to our applicants and the audience? Yes, Mr. Chairman. The Board of Adjustment is a quasi-judicial body established by the Board of County Commissioners under Chapter 62, Article 2, Division 4 of the Brevard County Code. The Board of Adjustment is empowered to hear requests for variances to the zoning regulations and sign regulation in Chapter 62, Article 6, and Article 9, pursuant to the Florida Rules of Appellate Procedure in persons or persons jointly or severely aggrieved by any decision of the Board of Adjustment made within 30 days after the date the order is signed applied to a court of competent jurisdiction for appropriate relief. Mr. Chairman, you have uh, four items on today's agenda. Thank you, Mr. Ball. Um, would Mr. Higgins, our vice chair, please explain to the applicants and the audience the statutory definition of a hardship? In the new hardship, a variance may be granted when it will not be contrary to the public interest and where owing to special conditions, the little enforcement of the provisions of this chapter will result in un unnecessary and undue hardship. The term undue hardship has specific legal definition in this context and essentially means that without the requested variance, the applicant will have no reasonable use of the subject property under existing development or regulations. The personal medical reasons shall not be considered as grounds for establishing undue hardship sufficient to qualify an applicant for a variance. Economic reasons may be considered only in instances where the landowner cannot yield a reasonable use or a reasonable return under the existing land development regulations. The applicant must answer a variance hardship worksheet with six questions. The Board of Adjustment will discuss these questions today with each applicant who has requested a variance. Thank you, Mr. Higgins. <clears throat> I will now address our board members, the applicants, and our audience regarding the board procedures for today's proceedings. The Board of Zoning Adjustment, as a quasi-judicial board with members appointed by the Brevard County Board of Commissioners, will utilize Robert's Rules of Order to, to conduct its proceedings. The chair is asking all board members not to ask questions while the applicants are making their initial presentations. Once the applicants have completed their presentations, we will begin board questioning with the board member who represents the applicant's district going first. When concluded, questioning is open to the full board. The chair will recognize each board member in turn. Once all board members have completed their questioning, we will then open the floor to the audience who may be here to speak concerning the applicant's application. Anyone from the audience wishing to speak will be given the opportunity to address the board, but only once. At the conclusion of public comment, the applicant will be given additional time for rebuttal, as well as to present their final comments. Once completed, no further comment will be heard from the applicant or the public. The action then moves to the board for discussion and action. We would not use a timer for this meeting. Instead, we are asking each speaker to be concise in what they have to say. It is important that you stay on subject and avoid information that is not relevant. Any person speaking must provide their name and address for the public record. Those wishing not to verbally state their address may ask the clerk at the podium for an address card. Uh, please fill it out and return it to the clerk. Are there any questions regarding these procedures from the board members? No. Are there any questions regarding these procedures from the applicants? Are there any questions regarding these procedures from the audience? Seeing none, we will move to our next order of business. Our next order of business is to approve the minutes of our previous meeting in January. Are there any additions or corrections? 
Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. I'll second. The motion was made by Mr. McCann and seconded by Mr. Higgins. All in favor? Aye. All, any opposed? The minutes are approved. We now move into the consideration of the variance applications. Mr. Ball, may we have the first applicant that is requesting a variance? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, item H1 is zoning action number 21PZ00093 in District 2. The applicants are Kenneth Kurt and Tina C. Krokenberger. They request a variance from Chapter 62, Article 6, Brevard County Code, Section 62-2109A to permit a variance of four feet over the maximum six foot requirement for a fence and wall in a EU2 zone uh, classification. The property is 0 0.46 acres located at the northeast corner of the cul-de-sac of uh, Brahman Avenue, approximately 738 feet north of Tuckaway Drive. Okay, will the applicants step forward to the podium? Would you please state your name and address for the record? Tina Krockenberger. Is it on? It, um, yes, the okay. green light's on. Okay. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. You can close. Sorry. Tina Krockenberger, the address is 3401 Brahman Avenue, Rockledge, Florida. Okay, um, raise your right hand. Do you swear and affirm that the evidence you are about to give this Board of Adjustment is the truth? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Please speak directly into the microphone and how may we help you? Okay. Um, my husband and I bought the property in 2016 and after we bought it, we, um, when we bought it, we realized that there was an area north of the house, that 18 foot, a little bit more than 18 foot that was unusable. Um, there's a drainage ditch along Martin Road that borders our property and the drainage ditch dips six foot down from the foundation of the home into the drainage ditch there's a six foot embankment or used to be um, we had our engineer look at it he didn't feel that there was any problems with the house itself um, I went to the county for all the building records at the time for permits because we were told by a neighbor that the previous or original builder owner had permitted for a stem wall to be placed on the north edge of the house to protect the foundation there was nothing in the permits for the for brevard county for that um, we've then discovered there was no stem wall installed it's a monolithic slab and there was only three foot of a rock bed and an embankment that was built to protect the home so our engineer came up with a plan to put in a retaining wall um, fill that area in with fill dirt. We had it compacted and by a, an excavating company. And then we tied in a slab to the foundation of the home all the way out to the stem wall with rebar and a four inch concrete slab. At the time that we did everything, we did know that there was a variance required. Um, the stem wall is almost six foot, I'm sorry, the retaining wall is almost six foot from the drainage ditch part of the property up to the foundation of the house. Um, right now it's unusable to us because according to the building department, Frank Piccarelli and I've been talking over the past year and a half, we need to have a railing for safety. The railing requirement is 36 inches at the minimum. So what we're asking for is a four foot railing so that it's a little higher for protection of anybody that comes out to the property. Um, in the meantime, my husband and I decided to put the house on the market and it, we do have a sale pending and a closing date. They now want to close next Tuesday. Um, so we are in a position now where we'd like to ask for the variance. The, the, it's going to be um, a four foot wall or fence on top of a retaining wall. So in my brain when I first started this process, I didn't think of it as a six foot fence. Um, if that drainage ditch is ever filled in with a culvert by the association who owns that easement, 
Tract A is owned by Tuckaway Lakes Homeowners Association. If they ever decide to put in a culvert to match the culvert that is to the west of us and fill in the land, then it won't be, it won't be 10 foot because the land will be filled in. So that is our predicament in a nutshell. Um, you are in district two. two, which is Mr. McCann, and you have the floor. So when you had the uh, retaining wall built and the, with the fill dirt, which mm -hmm. ended up being a concrete deck for all intents and purposes, you said that, I think you said that you knew there was a variance that was required at the time. The original permit was um, was rejected. Well, it wasn't rejected. I spoke with, I worked with Kristen and zoning and they approved the permit for the retaining wall and the deck tied into the house without the railing. Okay. Okay, so this is why we're doing the variance request for the railing. Okay. okay. So. I don't have any other questions. Does anyone else have uh, questions? Any other board members? Mr. Higgins? It's uh, <clears throat> adjacent to this picture here, across the way there. What, what height is that? That's, um, I think that's Phillips Landing, and that's a, a nine foot fence on their bordering of their association property. That's a fence that goes all the way around their whole okay. variance. So curious. Yes. More questions? All right, um, conclusion of the questions. Step aside for a second, hopefully. Is there any, is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak in favor or opposition to the variance? Seeing none, um, we'll move on to Next slide. So you return. Anything else you want to say before you sit? I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you all for the opportunity, and I apologize for my last month. I'm sorry. It's okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, uh, gentlemen, it's uh, now our turn to uh, discuss this. So what is the pleasure of the board? Approve the variance as uh, presented on the survey. Okay, Mr. Bovel has uh, made a motion to approve the uh, variance application. Second. Mr. McCann has seconded. Is is uh, there any further discussion? I have been out to the property to take a look at it, and I um, understand everything that you've said. Uh, last month and this month. I see the, the mess that you bought yourself into a couple of years ago. That was an incredibly steep slope right adjacent to your house and I can understand how um, an engineer and even a lay person would think that the foundation wouldn't be secured by that slope. Um, I'm in support of what you did to fix it. I think that was very um, bright to do. And when I was out there, I thought to myself, and this was before this was with the, the prior variance request in which I believe it was a setback um, that was mistakenly brought to our attention. I thought to myself, that doesn't look very safe. It should have a railing around that deck. And, um, and now I'm happy to see that this is exactly what this variance is for. And I um, fully support it to make that structure a lot more safe. That's a, that's a high fall um, from, that, from that area. And um, I support your, your request. I've seen the same thing when I rode by, too. Same as he said. Okay. Um, any other? Okay. Um, hearing no further discussion, I will now uh, read through the six undue hardship worksheet, worksheet questions. In order to authorize any variance, the Board of Zoning Adjustment must find all of the following factors to exist. Number one, that special conditions and circumstances exist which are not applicable to other land structures or building in the applicable zoning classification. Um, 
Apparently there are other uh, remedies that were, were uh, made in other uh, properties with the culvert that was mentioned. Uh, number two, that the special conditions and circumstances do not result from the actions of the applicant. Uh, this is a little difficult in that you did put in the stem wall and the, and the uh, deck. Um, the granting the variance requested will not confer on the applicant any special privilege that is denied by the provisions of this chapter to other lands, buildings, or structures in the identical zoning classification. As this was explained to me, the board is not um, allowed to grant special privileges to people like celebrities or county officials. Uh, and I'm not going to characterize you, but I don't think you fit that <laughs> application or fit that definition. Um, that literal enforcement of the provisions of this chapter would deprive the applicant of rights commonly enjoyed by other properties in the identical zoning classification under the provisions of this chapter and constitute unnecessary and undue hardship on the applicant. Um, this, this is frankly a tough one to uh, interpret, um, but unless other houses are close to that ditch as yours is, um, you, you would be the same as everyone else in, in that area. That the variance granted is the minimum variance that will make possible the reasonable use of the land, building, or structure. Um, my understanding is that this would not be the absolute minimum variance since you're asking for uh, four foot rather than three foot. Um, but when you take that into account with the, the height of the additional stem wall, um, we can see that that's a, a reasonable request. That the granting of the variance will be in harmony with the general intent and purpose of this chapter, and as such variance um, will not be injur injurious to the area involved or otherwise detrimental to the public welfare. And that is that it fits in with the neighborhood. As uh, Mr. Higgins pointed out, there is tall fences in, in the area. So that is the reading of the six questions. Uh, at this time, I call the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, your variance is approved. And moving right along, Mr. Ball, may we please have the next applicant? Uh, I'm item sorry, H2. Mr. Ritchie. Mr. Ritchie, may we please have the next applicant? Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, the next item is H2. It's uh, action number 21PZ00072 in District 3. Uh, we have Catherine L. Miller, Revocable Trust. John T. Miller requests a variance. From Chapter 62, Article 6 of Brevard County Code, Section 62-1336, uh, parentheses 4, to permit a variance of 48 feet from the required 125-foot lot width required in the RR1 Rural Residential Zoning Classification. The property is 1.39 acres, located on the west side of Highway A1A, approximately uh, 0.56 miles south of Boudreaux Road. Um, this area does not have an address assigned and it's in the Melbourne Beach area. Okay, will the applicant please step forward to the podium? Speak into the microphone and please give me your name and address. Sure, my name is Laura Young. I'm an attorney with the law firm of Dean Mead. I'm here representing um, the Catherine L. Miller Trust. The two trustees here, John and Matt, are also here in the event there are any additional questions that you might want to ask from them. Okay. Um, I need to swear you in. I know you're a lawyer and I've had pushback on that, but. Oh no, I'm a real estate lawyer. We don't get sworn in very often. This is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, then tell us. Yeah, we have to go to speak. Mm -hmm. Do you swear and affirm that the evidence you are about to give to this Board of uh, Adjustment is the truth? I do. Okay. How may we help you? 
Um, the trustees of the Catherine Miller Trust have come before you requesting a variance because many, many, many years ago, in 1988, I believe it was, the property was administratively rezoned by the county during its comp plan um, formulation, and it was zoned to a zoning category that does not comply with, or that the lot width does not comply with. The lot width is about 77 feet, a little over 77 feet. The minimum lot width requirement in the new zoning category that's been uh, the zoning category for the property for quite some time is 125 feet. So in order to develop the property, they've come before you asking for a variance to the to the minimum variance necessary in order to be able to build on the lot one day. And they do they do currently have a contract buyer who is interested in building on the lot. Um, and so that the variance has obviously come to, to a head and it's important for them to obtain it now so they're able to sell the property and have it developed like the areas, like the other lots in the area that were also administratively rezoned. Three, um, our board member for that district is uh, absent today, um, so I will take the lead. Um, I don't have any questions myself, but now I'm going to open it up to the floor for uh, any questions from any of the other board members. And hearing no questions, um, we will, if you would step sure. aside momentarily and we do i'm not sure if anybody is here to speak in for or against it but if we would appreciate it, an opportunity to rebut if we need to. that that is part of the process so is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak in favor or opposition to this variance I'm in favor well you need to come forward in order to uh, speak And I need to get your name and address and swear you in and, yes, and all. But um, I take it from your comment, you're speaking in favor. In favor. Okay. Yes. Um, please state your name and address for the record. Uh, my name is David Arambula. My address is 671 Indian River Drive, Melbourne, Florida. Okay. I need to swear you in. Raise your right hand. Uh, do you swear and affirm that the evidence you're about to give to this Board of Adjustment is the truth? I do. Okay. Thank you. You may. Okay. You have um, the floor. I'm in favor of the variance. Um, I'm working with the builder and we're trying to um, also get a variance from the state for the septic, but this is the first uh, step in that variance. Um, there's also a property adjacent to it next door that has the exact same footage. It's 77.36 and um, that structure received a variance as well. So I'm just hoping that this lot may have the same exception. Okay, That's thank it. you. Thank you. Are there any other persons in the audience who would like to speak in favor or opposition? Okay, seeing none, um, you may return, ma'am. Uh, my script. Uh, do you have any other uh, response or a summary statement? Only that we did go through the six criteria that you're about to, sir, and, we, and, and I've got responses to all of them in the event you don't think you've met them all. Um, but in, of course, in our opinion, we believe that you've met them all, and, and I know um, the application kind of stands for itself. But if you've got any questions about any of the criteria that you're concerned about, I'm definitely here to address that. Okay. Um, well, that's a summary statement. So at this time, if you would take a seat. The action now moves to this side of the, uh, the wall and uh, to the board for a discussion. Um, taking, taking the lead for District 3, uh, I have no questions, but I open it up. Didn't we just do a similar one here previous month? I, I, we did something similar. Yeah. Very similar yeah. to this. Yeah, yeah but it wasn't, it wasn't an administrative rezoning where they zoned them out of yeah. compliance. Um, he wanted to be yeah, I I put into compliance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Several months several months ago, we did do one in South uh, Brevard County down Seems District like Five, it. that was administratively uh, rezoned. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, uh, gentlemen, do we have a motion? I'll make a motion. 
to approve the variance request as described in the application and depicted on the survey. I second. Mr. McCann has made the motion. Mr. Bovell has seconded it. Um, any further discussion? No. Okay. Hearing no further discussion, I will now read through the six undue hardship worksheet questions. If I can find them in my notes here. Okay. In order to authorize any variance, the Board of Zoning Adjustment must find all of the following factors to exist. That special conditions and circumstances exist which are not applicable to other land structures or buildings in the applicable zoning classification. Um, special condition that I see is that uh, the property was rezoned after the property lines were already set. Um, that special conditions and circumstances do not result from the ap actions of the applicant. Again, um, the property existed in its current condition and uh, was, was rezoned. That granting the variance requested will not confer on the applicant any special privilege that is denied by the provisions of this chapter to other lands, buildings, or structures in the identical zoning classification. Again, I know of no special uh, privileged special persons, celebrities that are involved in this that would sway our opinion. That literal enforcement of the provisions of this chapter would de deprive the applicant of rights commonly enjoyed by other properties in the identical zoning classification under the provisions of this chapter and constitute unnecessary and undue hardship on the applicant. Um, again, the, we're legitimizing an existing condition that did not arise from the actions of the applicant. That the variance granted is the minimum variance that will make possible the reasonable use of land, building, or structure. Um, we're just legitimizing the frontage um, footage that exists there before, so it is the minimum variance. The granting of the variance will be in harmony with the general intent and purpose of this chapter, and that such use variance will not be injurious to the area involved or otherwise detrimental to the public welfare. Um, this is in harmony with the local area and there are going to be others that have um, this problem in the future. So, having read through that. I now call the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The vote is unanimous and your motion passes. Your application for variance is approved. Mr. Ritchie, may we have the next applicant or at least an explanation for that? Yes, sir. Uh, item H3 is action number 21PZ00096. It's in District 5. Uh, the, let me read the. Mm -hmm. Motion to table it, right? Yeah, yeah the, we're asking for this item to be tabled. There was some confusion by staff after it started to review the application, so we just need an additional time to work with the applicant to get that resolved before you guys hear it. I'll make a motion. We, uh, <laughs> table. Table. H3. I second. All in favor? All Aye. Aye. No discussion. Okay. A um, little self, uh, little self. Uh, um, I after uh, last meeting, I struggled a little bit with the definition and how to use those six questions that I had to read and summarize for the board. Uh, and I reached out to Mr. Ball and asked him if he could help me figure out how to turn that legalese into street language that I could understand. And he proposed that he give a workshop. And so we were at that point in the agenda where uh, Mr. Ball would like you to give us a workshop on our duties under these six questions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I thought it was a good uh, time to uh, present the uh, PowerPoint presentation we did um, 
about a year ago. I know a couple of you are new, a couple of you are old. So this is just a refresher of uh, some of the things that you guys need to um, acknowledge or you know to interpret. So with that, uh, this is the process, the Board of Adjustment. If you guys would want to follow along with the uh, PowerPoint, you guys should have the slides in front of you. So the first slide is authority of the Board of Adjustments. Uh, a variance is the right to use or to build on land in a way prohibited by strict application of a zoning ordinance. Intended by, uh, for owners uniquely and severely impacted by the zoning ordinance, there's two types of uh, variances. One is for, for use, which is prohibited under 62253B. Uh, uh, and then there's non-use, um, which is covered under 6251 and section 62-253B, uh, governing setbacks, lot width, and lot size. Uh, the applicant must demonstrate an unnecessary and undue hardship that's in uh, section 62253A. Um, I provided the code sections in here for you. If you want to go back and look at, you know, Muni code, Muni code is online and you can peruse that at your convenience. Um, so let's talk about hardship for a second. A hardship means that the owner's land is uniquely and unnecessarily burdened. When a, uh, land, a landowner cannot yield a reasonable use and or economic return under the existing land development regulations, and that falls under 6252253A. Um, so one of the um, variances that you granted here this afternoon would be a good example of that with the um, that uh, retaining wall and the, and the fence and ditch. Those are, you know, that would, you know, in my professional opinion that would be something that is unique um, un unique uh, circumstance for granting a variance uh, personal circumstances are not cause for a variance i.e simply wanting a bigger house uh, the burden is on the applicant to de demonstrate their hardship uh, in the application the applicant is required to fill out the uh, hardship uh, worksheet and in there they are providing justification for you guys to determine whether it meets the hardship definition. Uh, planners work with the applicants to help them understand what does and what does not constitute a hardship. Applicants fill out the variance hardship worksheet. Uh, so when staff takes in an application, applicants discover that they need a variance in these situations among others before submitting a permit when they realize they cannot do what they wish to do do the lots irregular shape or configuration after submitting a new billing permit and discovering their lot does not meet the zoning requirements we've had one this afternoon uh, after submitting the foundation survey where there is an error made um, and when trying to sell the property they call our office and find out that their zoning their lot doesn't meet the minimum zoning requirements uh, we do allow for administrative waiver. That's under 621153 and 1154. It has to be under 10%, and that's done uh, administratively. And uh, the zoning official, which is not me, can uh, um, approve those. It requires a signature of the abutting neighbors uh, of the property receiving the waiver. It does not require a public hearing. Um, the prerequisites for granting a variance uh, that special conditions or circumstances exist which are not applicable to other lands, structures, or buildings in the applicable zoning classification. A variance is not the appropriate remedy to a problem impacting the entire neighborhood and must be peculiar to the property. Uh, that a special conditions and circumstances do no, does not result from the actions of the applicant for example, an applicant puts an accessory structure on their property line despite having room elsewhere is not the grounds for a variance. That granting a variance requested will not confer on the applicant's, applicant any special privilege that is denied by the provisions of this chapter to other lands, buildings, or structures in identical zoning classification. 
the literal interpretation of the provisions of this chapter would deprive the applicant of rights commonly enjoyed by other properties and that identical zoning classification under the provisions of this chapter and will constitute unnecessary and undue hardship on the applicant. That the variance granted it is the minimum variance that will make possible the reasonable use of the land building or structure. That granting the of the variance will be in harmony with the general intent and purpose of this chapter and that such a variance will not be injurious to the area involved or otherwise detrimental to the public welfare. So a um, couple common reasons to deny a, a variance. The unnecessary hardship in general to the neighborhood or community rather than peculiar to the property. The issue was self-created, i.e. dividing a lot into two sub substandard lots without checking the zoning regula regulations first. The only reason given for the variance is a personal circumstances, i.e. I want a bigger house or I want a bigger shed. Um, the variance request is excessive. And so the next two pages are, are two um, variance examples. Um, one would, would be, you know, something that's reasonable as far as um, uh, an application that was done last year where there was a uh, request for a lot with reduction. That's, that was a 52% increase from what the code allows for. Um, the lot was split by a previous owner, creating a non-conforming lot of record uh, that needs to be reckon, uh, legitimized. So in my, my, in my toolbox, whenever I see a variance request that's greater than 50%, it kind of perks my interest of, you know, that's pretty substantial. And um, in, in my book, that's, you know, a reason to, hey, it, maybe we need to look at the code and the code is not doing something that it should. Uh, the other example that I wanted to bring to your attention, and this kind of goes along the lines of uh, excessive. Uh, there was a requested accessory structure of 2,489 square feet over the 891 square foot uh, permitted under 62-20-100 for a total of 3,380 square feet and it was a 279 percent increase. So when the Board of Adjustment approves these variances it sets the precedence and we, we need to be careful on that um, and I think the you know I think you guys have um, caught on to that. I know that you guys, when looking at dock variances, about the protrusions, is that if you give somebody four feet, the next guy comes in five feet, and the next one six feet, and before you know it, it's an encroachment into the canal. So kind of along the same lines of that. Uh, so that concludes staff's workshop on the variance process in that. Um, was the county attorney's office going to talk about sunshine? I had some questions on this. If we take them okay, we can, yeah, we can do questions first. Can the one about special pri privilege? You and I talked. Narrowed it down to, I, I called it special person, a celebrity, a high-ranking official, someone who um, would have influence over the board. You know. Of, beyond what a normal citizen would have. But I'm looking at it the other way. We had a couple of applications here in the past few months where it was, you really need to approve this variance because Mrs. McGillicuddy is sick and if you don't approve it, she's gonna have a stroke and die. And you guys are the ones that can. And I wonder if that's part of the special privilege. We can't take into account circumstance, personal circumstances or status we're here to do the best for the citizens and taxpayers of Brevard County. So is that legitimate, talking about those personal circumstances as being a special privilege? I, I think that's for, for, you know, you as a board to determine the special circumstances and what you determine as special privilege. I don't want to uh, interject my views on, on that. I will tell you it's very subjective. It's like you know trying to hit a moving target. 
so I guess that's the best advice for for I can give you all in 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 doing that. It can be a wide range, you know. And it can you know it can you know be very different. So we need to balance the, between the compassionate, humanistic versus the board responsibilities to the. I I would I quality. would say yes, and I would also open it up to all all the testimony that you hear from staff's perspective, from the applicant's perspective, and any public input. I think, you know, your duties include, you know, to taking that three, you know, three forms of testimony and, and boil it down to, you know, whether you're going to support the variance or request or not. Okay. Another example on that uh, is similar to what you said. Uh, I think it was just last month we had like some ladies, or some person has lived there 30 years and they've had uh, six sheds in the property. And uh, it was four, to the, one was forward of the, the residence, but yet it was passed previous. Now they want to put a new roof on there or take and replace that structure per footprint. That's similar, to, I think, to the reasoning of, you know, what you had said. No? Okay. Because <laughs> um, that's a physical, that's a physical, the shed's there, the this thing, or the problem or whatever. But I'm thinking more of the personal prestige and, or um, circumstances. If I remember correctly, if I remember correctly, I think that, that was part of it. So the the other you know and when when you review these variances you know sometimes you get you you'll get a variance in front of you where it's a long slender piece of property and the principal structure is you know 250 feet you know from the 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 road right the where they get access and so really from the geometry of the lot there isn't really much else place to put a detached garage or a shed besides in front of the, you know, in front of the principal. So in, in that case, you know, you know, you can, you know, you, you know, um, a variance would be, you know, would be, you know, ideal because, you know, the, the front setback is all the way in the back, you know, but those are just some of the things that, you know, you can take an account and, with these, you know, variances and, and each variance is, you know, a standalone application and you have to review that based on, you know, the facts of the case. Okay. I don't think we have any more questions. Okay. For you. I didn't realize that you wanted it today. Um, we have a PowerPoint that we normally give on this topic that I can put on the agenda, I guess, for the next meeting, um, if that works. But I mean, the two big takeaways about the Sunshine Law for your purposes would probably just be if you're using a personal email address to conduct any kind of board business, those emails are subject to public records requests. And then also uh, board members can't be discussing board matters with each other off the record. It needs to be at public meetings in the sunshine. Um, so those are the two most important things, but we can give you the whole presentation next time um, if that's what you guys want. Do we know how many applications we have for next month? I mean, is it a few or is there a dozen? Do you, do you know? There, there's a, a teetering between five and six. Okay. Um, we would invite you to come and give that presentation at the end of next next meeting. End of next uh, yeah. meeting? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. All right. And the PowerPoints can be distributed with the packets? Yeah, we'll, we'll include that in the packet so you guys can take a look at it before the meeting. Okay. All right. Seeing no other business before the board, I declare the meeting adjourned. Thank you.
The opinions expressed by any member of the public during any period of public comment do not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of the Board of County Commissioners of Brevard County, Florida, Space Coast Government Television, or the program sponsor and are solely those of the presenter. The Board of County Commissioners of Brevard County, Florida, Space Coast Government Television, and the program sponsor hereby expressly disclaim any and all responsibility or liability for any defamatory or slanderous statements expressed by any member of the public during any such period.